three, two, one, let's go. Hi everybody and welcome to another exciting edition of Boring JavaScript. I'm your host of Virtual Void, aka Mike Smith, and today we're going to be talking about optional training in JavaScript. Now that's a very new concept here for ES6 or the latest edition of JavaScript and it allows you to very gracefully recover from undefined properties within undefined properties within undefined properties within objects. Confused? Hey, so was I. So let's just get right to it and we'll show you how it works. Now let's do a little setup first before we show you exactly what optional chaining is all about. I have a array here, an array here, of two different animals, and each animal is represented within an object. Now there are certain properties within this object. For instance, we have a type property, a name property, and a stats property. You can see that for cowardy, and you can see that here for cat. However, there are a couple of properties on each record that is not on, present on the other record. For example, here for Coyote, I have habitat and location, but you don't see that for cat. I'll bring a cat up a little bit here. You don't see that at all for cat. While for cat, I have fur, but you don't see fur at all here for Coyote. Now, why would anybody want to do that? Well, if you have databases like NoSQL databases, there are no defined records. For instance, you can't sit there, well, you can, but you basically don't sit there and say, oh, this record has a type and a name and a stats and it doesn't have anything else. NoSQL type databases are very flexible and very fluid about the type of records that you could store within the database. So in this case, one record may have habitat and location, while another record may have fur. And that's all very nice and normal. So what will happen if we bring up this code here and I want to first get my coyote fur and then I next want to get my cat habitat. Of course, fur does not exist on coyote and habitat location does not exist on the cat. So therefore, I would expect both of these to come up to be undefined. Let's take a look in the node and see what happens. We go in the node and we say node, no, Chain. Did I spell that right? Yeah, no chaining. Boom! Crash! It just blew up on us. First of all, if you can see it here, it's kind of hidden. My code is files undefined, and that's what I did expect. But notice we got an error. We're trying to do the cat. And it basically said it tried to look at, well, first of all, here's the error. Cannot read property location on the defined. It tried to read location on the habitat property. Well, the problem is location doesn't exist. We knew that. But habitat also does not exist on my cat. Therefore, JavaScript didn't know what to do with it, so it just threw out an error. Why didn't fur throw out an error on Coyote? Well, because we know that fur did not exist, but the Coyote record itself, which was animals, which was animals uh, index of zero, does exist. So therefore, fur is undefined. Location doesn't exist, but habitat also doesn't exist. So JavaScript didn't know what to do with it, and so it threw an error. That's what you would normally get back in the old days if you didn't have what optional chaining was all about. So let's take a look on what optional chaining will now do for you. So now for optional chaining, I'm taking my exact same database, my same two animals with the same habitat location and the same fur, and we're going to change our code just a little bit to get optional chaining to work. Let's bring that code up. Same code as I had before, before, I'm doing fur and I'm doing habitat and location on the cat. But notice now I've got a little question mark in front of the dot. And that's the optional chaining part for JavaScript. Before, if I had habitat.location, it would have searched for location on habitat. Habitat was undefined, so therefore, ah, kick it out, blow up it as an error. But now having the optional chaining there, I'm telling JavaScript that, hey, habitat may or may not exist. If it does not exist, keep everything as undefined and don't throw an error. So now I should expect fur, as before, to come back as undefined. Location is trying to find its way on the habitat, but habitat is also undefined. So therefore, it's going to print out as undefined instead of just throwing the error. Let's go into Node and see how that works. And node, where's there's node? Node chaining. Oh, much nicer now. No more horrible, disgusting little error message. Now everything is nice and orderly. 
The Cowrie's fur is undefined, which means Cowrie has no fur whatsoever. <laughs> and the cat's habitat is undefined, which means the cat doesn't live anywhere anymore. But the key here is, is now by using optional chaining, I am able to override that natural error that JavaScript will generate if it can't find a property within a property within a property within a property if some of those parent properties are non-existent on the object. So optional chaining will kill that error message for you and make your code easier to live with and better able to control any errors that may occur with your data. So now that you've seen what optional chaining will do, let's take a look at a real world application of how it can be used. So this particular program here called GetAnimal will print out a, will read from a database and print out a listing of all the animals that happen to live in zone 1A and give the low elevation reading for zone 1A. Now I'm just too lazy to actually build an entire MongoDB database and do everything that needs to be done to get it hooked into my node. So what I've done is I've created JSON files to simulate that. I have a JSON file here for a coyote and another JSON file here for cat. Now within Coyote here, you can see that I have the habitat, and then I have a zone within the habitat, and then within each zone, I have A1, let me bring this up here on the screen, yep, and A2, and then within each of those zones, I have temperature, rainfall, and elevations, and the important one is the elevations property, and within the elevations property, I have a sub terra, low, medium, and high. It's the low property of the elevations that I want to get a hold of. So I want to get hold of the animal dot habitat dot zone dot a one dot elevations dot low. As you can tell, it's a property of the thing about yay long. And there's a reason I have it that long. It's because if you go to cat, we have no zone locations, no A1 or A2 within the zones, no elevations within those A1s or A2s, or no low elevations within that. It's very, very simple. And this is a very good case of how you will yeah, how NoSQL databases work. While Coyote, I can have all these temperature gradients, all these temperatures and elevations and everything like that. For a domesticated cat living inside a house, it's just not, it's not needed. You don't need all that information. So therefore, if you don't need the information, why include it inside the database? So again, Coyote has all this information. Cat doesn't have that information. But within my get animal program, I want to be able to print out all the low elevation readings for zone A1. And that can be very easily done with the optional chaining. So here's all the magic that occurs. Let me bring up on the screen here. This is all the magic. This just goes through each of the different JSON files and reads them in and then extracts the information into a variable called data. The optional chaining occurs right there. Check first for the low property. If it's inside elevations, if it is not there, return undefined. If elevations is not there, keep going to A1. If A1 is not there, keep going to zone. If zone is not there, keep going to habitat. If habitat is not there, keep going to data. If data is not there, well, then you're pretty much done. Now, remember, all you have to do in optional chaining is that if one of these turns out to be undefined, the whole thing is undefined at that particular point in time. If I didn't have optional chaining here, as you saw in the first example, it would just error out. But now with all this optional chaining here, I should get my data in for Coyote, but get in A, in this case right here, Here's the, here's the actual code right here, but I will get NA if things come in as undefined. If it doesn't, I should be able to get the string value for the data for the low elevation in zone A1 in a particular habitat. Let's see how that works in node. Let's take a quick look. Node get animal. Sure enough, that's exactly what happened. There's my reading for coyote. And my cat came in NA because there is no uh, temperate low elevation for zone A1 for a particular cat. Now, let me show you what the code would have had to look like if you didn't have the optional chaining. So let me bring up these two pieces of, of code here, these pre-done code. Take that out. Here's your first item. To be able to get this done without the optional chaining, this is the old way of doing it. I would have had to say if data and data.habitat and data.habitat.zone and data.habitat.zone.a1 and data.habitat.zone.a1.elevations. If all of that came out to be true or non-undefined, I can then finally possibly get the low. Because remember, we'll get an error if it tries to find a property on an undefined. So I'm first checking to make sure data is defined. If it is undefined, it just stops at that particular point in time. Otherwise, I would have checked to see if data habitat was undefined. 
then if, if data habitat is defined, it would then check for zone. And if zone is defined, it would then check for A1. If A1 is defined, it's defined, then it would check for elevations. You see, so on and so forth and all that. So that's the old way of doing it. And if you really wanted to mess with some junior developers, you could have done a ternary, which is this one right here. Data question mark, data dot habitat question mark, the data habitat question mark zone, data habitat zone dot A1, and so on and so forth. It's a huge giant mess. So all of that code can then be now be represented with the optional chaining right here. So as you can tell, optional chaining makes your life a heck of a lot easier in able to try to figure out or deal with undefined properties that are within undefined properties that are within undefined properties that are within your object. And that's all there is to optional chaining in JavaScript. I hope you enjoyed our video. Hope I didn't bore you to death. Please visit us at www.boringjavascript.com for a list of all of our videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel or see everything we've got at blog.thevirtualoid.com. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you later.